RF Man here. Uh, this will be part two of our video series on low pass filter designs. And where we left off in part one is talking about the LC software or design simulation program. And this is a free download, so you can go to tonesoftware.com. You'll see the link for LC and a number of other tools. And you can download this for free and use it offline on your computer. So as I said, this is very user friendly. So we start by just clicking new design. And then we can either have a low pass filter that starts with a capacitor on the input or inductor. I typically use inductor on the input side. So you'll see what the schematic looks like there. And the filter family we select the Chevy Chev. As I said, you can do a lot of comparisons here. You'll see the Chevy Chev filter has a much steeper roll off. That's why I prefer that and many other filter designers in the RF world prefer that family of filters as well. And we're looking at basically 20 meters, so it's 14 megahertz to 14.35 megahertz. So you want to be able to select a frequency above that. Usually we go 5 or 10 percent. You don't want to have the filter start to roll off in the uh, desired bandwidth. So we would go ahead and select a frequency that's above 14.35. So I'm just going to use 15 megahertz. So the designation here would be 15 and then M for megahertz. And we're going to go ahead and use a fifth order filter and a termination impedance, which is pretty standard for all RF, would be 50 ohms, and then the bandpass ripple. So this is the amount of ripple that you get in the bandpass. I typically like the ripple to be low, so I use like a 0.1 dB. So you'll see on the plot what that actually looks like. So here's our schematic. Remember we said it's going to use an inductor on the input and it's five bulk poles. So one, two, three, four, five. And there's our input impedance, 50 ohms. Output impedance, 50 ohms. So this uses the calculated values for L and C. And what we have to typically do is replace those calculated values with standard values. So for an inductor, it would be using the proper core and also the proper number of windings. And since we can't use like a half a winding or three quarters of a winding, we typically will round it either up one winding or down. So I will demonstrate an online tool that helps you determine to the nearest full turn what the inductance value would be. And the objective will be to get it as close to the target value as you can. And in this case, it's 608 nanohenries rounded off. So that's what the schematic looks like. And you can actually then go in and when you get your final values, you go in, you click edit, you click what values you want to modify and then you go ahead and edit that stage. So for example, we already know ahead of time here, 290 and 291 picofarads is not a standard value, but we can use 250 picofarad values in parallel, and that would give us 300. So I can come in here and edit this stage Click edit and then come here and put in the standard value. We're going to call that 300 PF. We accept that. You see the schematic automatically updates. Okay. And then when we look at the plot, it'll be with the updated values. Now, what I've done on my presentation for the same example is I show you the calculated values and then the, the actual standard values that, that I used. So if we plot this, um, we have to set this up. 
So you go ahead and plot it. You would basically go in and set up the frequency range for this. So I'm just gonna pause the video for a moment and set this. All right, so what I did here is I went back and changed the first capacitor back to the calculated value. And what we have to do before we plot is set it up. So we click analysis, we put in our frequency range. So we're gonna start the sweep at one megahertz, end it at 100 megahertz. And that's about all we have to do as far as setup goes. And then if we look at the plot, we can see the roll off here. Um, and you can see the slight amount of ripple in the bandpass, which is acceptable for any filter. And if we scroll down the trace and we look at the left hand corner, it shows me the frequency and it shows me how much attenuation I'm getting. So we want to get as close to 28 megahertz as we can. There we're at 28.05, and we've got about 31 dB of attenuation at that frequency. So that's basically how the software is used. You can save these plots. It has a save function, um, and go back and edit them as needed. So that's a quick demonstration of how to use the LC software. Like I said, it's pretty easy. It's user-friendly. Um, and allows you to do a lot of what ifs. You can edit components and edit topologies and see the results in the plot. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of this. Um, it asked me if I wanna save. <clears throat> and now I'm back to my slides. So let's take a look at the circuit we just calculated, okay? These were the calculated values from the software for the inductors and the capacitors. And we can take a look at the response of the filter, the roll off. And we can see at around 28 megahertz or so, we've got 31.6 dB. Again, these are the calculated values. So what we have to do is substitute the calculated values for standard values. So we already talked about the capacitor. It's basically 291 picofarads. So the closest standard value would be to use 250 picofarad capacitors in parallel. That gives us 300. So that part's easy. Now, what do we do for the inductors? Well, there's a tool online. Actually, there's, there are several tools out there, but I like this one the best. And you can enter the inductance in microhenry. So we had a 0 0.608, okay, in nanohenries. Okay. And we had a T130 toroid core. It was a dash six, which is yellow, with a permeability of eight. And we can see that the closest number of turns gives us eight turns at 610 nanohenries. So that's very close. And obviously, if we added a turn, we'd be off by quite a bit, or if we subtracted a turn. So that's a very close match to 608. So we can go back and use that one for our circuit. And if we take a look at the center inductor, okay, that's 100 and uh, 1.05 microhenries, excuse me. So we go back to our tool and we can go 1.05 microhenries and it's the same core. So it's a T130 and it would be dash six and it shows 10 turns is 960 nanohenries and we want 1050 nanohenries or 1.05 microhenries. So here again, we can add a turn that gives us around 1160 nanohenries 
and we subtract the turn, now we're 780. So actually the closest value would be to use 10 full turns around the toroid, giving us 960 nanohenries. So you can see this is a really convenient way of calculating what standard inductor could be used with a full turn for, e for, the, uh, for the windings. Remember, we can't use a partial turn, can't use a half turn or three quarters of a turn, so this helps us to calculate the closest value. And there we are at 10 turns. So we have eight turns for the two inductors on the end, 10 turns for the inductor on the middle. And now with those values plugged in, we see here's the response of the filter, here's the roll off, and actually there's not much difference. We have 31.6 with the calculated values, and we have 31.4 with using standard values. Now, that won't always be the case. We just happen to get very close with the values uh, that, that we were using for our circuit. So here we're looking at uh, one of my... Um, single LD MOS boards at 20 megahertz, I'm sorry, 20 meters. And this is with no low pass filter. So we've got about maybe second and third harmonic or about 30 dB down with no filter. But the FCC requires minus 43 dB or better. So this is what it looks like with no low pass filter. <clears throat> then when we add the low pass filter, we're getting more than 30 dB of attenuation. So you can see the second harmonic is down in the noise floor, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, etc. Um, we have a little bit of a spike here, but that's also way down below the FCC limit. So that looks pretty good. Um, the filter's doing its job there. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the actual response of the filter on the Nano VNA. So I'm going to pause this for a moment as I set that up. All right, so this is the setup of the filter on the Nano VNA. And we have the input of the filter connected to port one. We have the output of the filter connected to port two. And we're looking at S21, which is the gain, which is shown here. Now it might be easier to look at this on my notebook computer since I am using the Nano VNA Saver software. So let's go ahead and do that. Give up a much better view of the results and the response of the filter. So you can see here in the band pass, and let's get a little closer here. All right, if you look at the marker that I have here at 14 megahertz, uh, just a quick reminder, the center line of the Smith chart is the non-reactive line at 50 ohms, and this is the reactive circle at 50 ohms. So right in the center here is 50 ohm impedance. So you can see in the band pass, it's very well matched at 50 ohms, and you'll see somewhere around a 1.1, 1.2 SWR, which is excellent in the band pass. Now, if we take a look at the response of a frequency, okay, that would be S21, which shows us the gain. And if we move the cursor down to 28 megahertz, which is, I'm just reading off the screen here, right here, you can see we're getting about 37 dB of roll off, which is excellent. It's a little bit better than what we predicted with the software. So the Nano VNA Saver has a nice feature. It has some pop-up menus and pop-up displays, so you can take a closer look at it. So here we're basically at 28 megahertz. We're looking at around minus 37 dB. And if we go to the third harmonic, which would be 42 megahertz. So I'm just reading off the bottom scale here. It'd be right about there. You can see we're better than 50 dB. Well, let me just zoom in on that. And that's where, that's where we're at here at better than 50 dB. So you can see the filter is responding very well. Let me just exit out of that and go back to my 
presentation. And that's the response that we just looked at. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, this is what the filter looks like. When it's completely assembled, shows the coax terminations there. And this is the kit that I'm offering on my website. It comes with the PC board, the toroids, the high frequency chip capacitors, and the magnetic enamel coated wire. This is the URL to my website if you are interested. And if you click on this link here, it'll take you right to the page. So there's the filter available. It sells for $59 and it comes, as I said, with the board and all the parts needed. And there's the results on the spectrum analyzer you see there and also what we just looked at on the Nano VNA. So that's the setup on the website. And also comes with a full documentation package. It shows the response of the filter and there's some instructions for assembly. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Um, instructions are detailed enough. You shouldn't have any, any difficulty with that. And here's the specifications for the toroid and also on the chip capacitors that we're using. So that's the presentation. I wanted to introduce this as a new offering. So I wanted to make a video and share some of the detailed specifications on the filter. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. RF Man, thanks.